Griffin. Record. Uh, okay, so let's share the screen. I just published Right Club number two. Ah, oh, the recording missed Chewbacca. Okay, wait, before I share the screen for the recording. Okay, um, so now I can share the screen. Okay, so this is uh, uh, Right Club number two. Uh, uh, this is due Thursday five um you your instructions are to create a title for a first person shooter based on the works of jane austen um and my example here is pride and prejudice the call of darcy um ha ha ha, ha, ha. um <laughs> so uh um Submit it as a doc, uh, PDF, or text file. Um, if you don't know who Jane Austen is, uh, feel free to Google, Bing, whatever. Uh, uh, ask your parents. Ask your call. Call a friend. Um, anything you want to find out something about Jane Austen um, and create a the title of a shooter based on her works. Right. Um, uh, let me get the comments out or the chat. Okay. Um, cause they disappear when I sh screen share. Um, so, okay. Uh, you can submit up to three titles. You don't have to submit three. You can submit one, but three gives you three chances. Um, you don't need cool box art like this. I just Googled Pride and Extreme Prejudice, and this is what I found. I didn't even think of The Call of Darcy, and they just added that. Um, so I incorporated it. Um, uh, sh in general, shorter is always better for everything. Um, personally, I think uh, the slug, The Call of Darcy, is a little too much. I think Pride and Extreme Prejudice is enough. Um, we get it. We get that it's shooting and Jane Austen. Um, Call of Darcy is a, a little play with Call of Duty. Um, in fact, I would have, if I had thought of both of those, I would submit those as two titles, right? Um, uh, Call of Darcy is a perfectly good title uh, for, for a, a Jane Austen based first person shooter. Um, remember, they're all supposed to sell games. Um, so what I'm looking for is something that evokes both the works of Jane Austen and shooting. Um, so not every shooter is Call of Duty, right? Um, what kind of, go for a different kind of shooter, right? That, that has manners. Um, if you want to go, uh, don't feel bound to titles of Jane Austen novels. Um, Call of Darcy is based on a character in a Jane Austen novel. So feel free to pull from her works uh go watch uh there, there's recently been a new version of emma uh there are whole adaptations of her stuff uh clueless uh is a, a 90s adaptation of uh i believe emma um same story the only thing is they moved it from uh edwardian England to, uh, or maybe it's Georgian England. I think it's Georgian, um, uh, to nineties, Los Angeles and Paul Rudd was in it and he looks exactly like he looks now. He has not aged. It's strange. Um, 
Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. Um, it's taken, right? Somebody else came up with that first, right? Uh, so try and be original. Uh, don't overthink it. Um, honestly, if we had class, I would have told you all to pull out a piece of paper and we'd bang this out in 15 minutes and be done with it. Uh, uh, generally, write clubs, what I say is just get out a piece of paper and write as many things as you can come up with for, for the, um, the prompt, which in this case is uh, Austin and first-person shooters. Uh, and then when I say two minutes left, um, pick your best three and and put a star or an arrow on it um in this case since you're actually uh uh putting in a thing uh, 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 an electronic file in canvas uh i don't want to see the other 15 that you came up with just give me your three um normally there's all sorts of stuff about uh handwriting legibility but i don't have to worry about that nowadays um if any one of your three is is good and by good i mean evokes both first person shooters and jane austen uh you get credit that's it um it's more about a quick writing prompt that that gets you to spew as many uh interesting or silly things as you can um and less about agonizing over what you're going to put on the paper okay uh so i'd recommend doing it in pen and typing it up after, right? But uh, people think differently. If you'd rather just type it on your laptop or whatever, feel free. I don't care. Uh, so that's right, Club. Um, next. Any questions about right, Club? Uh, I will read. I know I said I would show the, the coolest um, pictures but i barely got uh, all this stuff done in time today so uh i didn't get pictures up uh because i have to copy them and make like a powerpoint or something uh maybe i'll do that to, for thursday i don't know i'll try um this is a lot <laughs> right uh i don't know uh okay um next characters Getting back to characters. Um, when uh, when last we met, let's share something else. Uh, I had written a wonderful play. Uh, 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 now titled, Gimme That, right? You remember this, it's beautiful. Um, so we have two characters, A and B. And I cranked this out over the course of, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Um, uh, what do we know about, oh, I gotta get chat up. Man. Uh, what do we know about A and B? If you were going to tell me about these characters, what would you say? How would you describe them? they are antagonists uh yes they are um b is a tough bargain b is lonely yeah um a is confident a may be desperate uh i would leave that up to the actor uh a is open to lots of options a is trying many things um think about this uh, being B's friend uh, is not enough. B only agrees after love is declared. Uh, B, A is manipulative. Uh, A, uh, B is clever to get more out of the deal. Uh, there's definitely a deal. Okay. Um, uh, a seems a little quick to give away things like eternal love. 
that's true. A is impulsive. Um, if you were going, if I said, you're the director of this scene, you are going to make this, um, who would you cast? Who would you cast as A and B? If you were going to cast somebody. Romantic comedies do it all the time. Yeah, they do. Um, so if if you were going to cast Jonah Hill and Michael Sarah, okay, I could see that. Um, actually, that's pretty good. Uh, Christian Slater. Um, I don't know who Lee Min Ho is. I'm going to Google that. Do, do, do. Lee Ho. Ooh, swanky. Uh, fame in Korea. I think I might have seen him. I don't know. I watched this Korean drama about uh, a, a noodle a noodle place boys over flowers um paul rudd as b uh christian slater the 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 heathers christian slater as uh as who a or b mm, a uh so uh very aggressive um Jonah Hill and Michael Sarah, I keep coming back to that because they're they're both well. Jonah Hill gets aggressive, and Michael Sarah is just that kind of bumbly. Um, but there's a smart to them. Uh, Paul Rudd. Um, okay. Um, I'd just like to point out that you have all everybody who who has. Um, Robert Downey Jr. as A. Ooh, that's a that's a different thing going on. Uh, I don't know who Jim Parsons is. Jim Parsons. Oh, him. Uh, um, the that uh, Big Bang guy um, as as B. Um, okay. Uh, I'd just like to point out that you cast men. Everyone cast men. Why'd you cast men? Kristen Stewart is B. Uh, there, there is no indication that that either A or B is a man, and none of you uh, cast. Even though you started talking about romantic comedy, um, we started as romance and talking about love forever. Um, nobody cast anybody as a woman. Um, why is that? Is is it inherent in the writing? I'm a man and I was reading it. Okay, maybe. Um, maybe it's written like men. Zach doesn't know any uh, uh, actor names. Uh, so he says uh, they feel like women would say it differently. Okay. Um, it is very direct. Uh, Rachel doesn't know actors, actresses. Men are more direct. Um, I think a lot of women would have problems with that. Uh, Scarlett Johansson is A. Uh, they're very overly confrontational, abrasive. Uh, Paul Rudd and Emma Stone. Uh, I can see that. Um, so... Uh, one of the things that's going on here is A is saying exactly what they want, right? Um, and B is directly responding to that. B, however, doesn't say, um, 
no, I want this, right? B just says no. Uh, so uh, B isn't nearly as direct as A. B waits for A to get around to figuring out what it is that will get that, right? Um, so B is a little bit more sophisticated than A. Um, A is just trying anything they can get, they can do. And I, I got to say, uh, every time I referred to A and B, I used they rather than he or she. I, I made a point of that because I knew I was going to get here eventually. Um, Also, you all cast adults. I just want to point that out. Um, can you see children playing this? A is Emma Stone, B is Jesse Eisenberg. Uh, kids generally don't say, I'll punch your lights out. Really? Uh, you thought it would be weird if you mentioned that they sound like kids? Kids are mean. Um, one of the things kids do is um, they, they say exactly what they want because they haven't learned tactics yet. Um, kid actors are harder to think of. Yeah, I may have rigged it a little bit then. Punch your lights out from the 50s. I, maybe I'm showing my age, although I wasn't alive in the 50s. So uh, there's that. Um, maybe I, I liked old movies too much. Um, but really, um, we know very, very little uh, about A and B. Uh, we don't know what they look like. Uh, we don't know... Uh, even if they're uh, uh, what genders they are, um, we don't know um, their relative sizes, right? Uh, we don't know about their hopes, their dreams. Uh, the only thing we know is that B has that, A wants it, um, and B really wants love. That's it. That's all we know. Um, so getting back to what I was talking about yesterday in that um, we can only uh, infer character traits from uh, what characters say and what they do, we can infer a couple of things from, in, in fact, the, they only do one thing here, which is they hug. Uh, so we only get what they say to each other here. Uh, we don't even know where they're standing, uh, where they're having this scene. Uh, if I said up here, uh, playground, wouldn't that change things for you? Right? Um, or even if I said a bedroom. Doesn't that change things? Doesn't that recontextualize the entire exchange? Um, suddenly, um, that's a much more interesting scene, right? Um, to do a cafeteria, right? Now it feels like teens. Or maybe uh, uh, children again. Uh, okay, so one of the things that we do when we before we we construct scenes like this uh, is we construct characters, um, and uh, for a lot of TV shows and games, um, we we create as writers, we create what's called a Bible uh, for uh, that particular world. And one of the things, well, what, what's included in that Bible 
um, is generally uh, character sketches, uh, details about each character in the piece, um, details about common places that we go in the piece, um, and uh, other details about the history of that world, so to speak, the, uh, uh, the world of, um, you know, the, the, the game. So like the Bible for The Last of Us would include uh, exactly where the, the plague came from. Uh, it would include uh, character sketches for all the major characters. Um, and it would probably include descriptions of like, what's Boston like? Uh, what's, uh, where else do they go? They go, they're going uh, east to west, I think. So uh, what are the various, they go to Lincoln Mass. Um, and as a person who, who lives near Lincoln Mass, uh, I laughed a lot over what Lincoln Mass was like in, in Last of Us, uh, because it's not anything like that, um, which is kind of funny. Uh, it's, it's a rural uh, little New England town, and that's not what was there in uh, Last of Us. So they hadn't done their research, but whatever. So we make a Bible with all these details so that, um, especially on TV shows, you have multiple writers um, and, and writers, new writers come in, old writers leave. Uh, when a new writer comes in, you give them the Bible and that way they know everything without having to necessarily sit there and watch uh, three seasons of TV, right? Um, or they may also know things that the the lead writers are working towards, right? So uh, they may know that the big bad of season three, which is where we are, it, uh, is telegraphed as being this person, but that person is really just a puppet of this other person, right? Um, and uh, there's going to be a reveal on episode uh, eight out of ten, uh, and you're going going to write episode four. So, um, number one, don't telegraph that the the real big bad is is this person. And number two, uh, the antagonist in this case should still be um, this this original person. It's a little bit more than a synopsis. Um, uh, especially for games, they can get long and thick, uh, big notebooks full of stuff for TVs. It's more like a, a packet that you get to read before you write for that company. Um, many times nowadays, there are more, uh, writer's rooms, uh, where, um, there's a whole hierarchy of levels of writers. Um, where the the lowest are writer's assistants who basically do the copying and uh, um, get the coffee and hang around but aren't allowed to to talk and then you get to be writers and and senior writers and eventually showrunners um, and the showrunner is is running the writer's room um, but like a a writer uh, may uh, be put in charge, uh, be told, hey, you're writing uh, uh, episode four, right? So go write episode four, or at least give me a three-page synopsis of what that is based on the Bible, and then we hash that out in the writer's room, and then somebody, that's why even though there's a writer's room with 10 writers in it, um, every uh, episode has a credit written by, and sometimes they'll have story by and written by. Um, and you, you'll see story by is, is basically, they did a pass. They made that uh, synopsis of the episode, the, the three page breakdown. Um, and then it was given to somebody else to actually write the dialogue and pull that out. And sometimes you'll see written by, uh, you know, 
John Smith and Emma Ashley, right? Um, and whoever's uh, uh, first has the majority of the writing on it, but the second person may have done what's called a punch up, uh, which is another pass of that that script to fix problems, to add jokes, to um, to make sure it conforms to the overall Bible, right? So that's what we're going to do this week is start on uh, a Bible. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I coughed. Uh-oh. Yeah. Let's calm down, everyone. Uh, okay. So uh, the assignment, let me switch to the assignment here. Uh, let's get back. To, oh, I'm in Jim Parsons. Okay. Share. Let's go back to the here. Uh, so I shouldn't be showing you all this, but whatever. Uh, character sheets. Oh, and actually share the character sheet. Where's the character sheet? Here it is. Uh, share. So, um, y'all are going to make, um, characters. Um, and I, I've got this character sheet. Um, it's, it's pretty standard. Um, you're going to name the character. You're going to identify what the character is. In this case, you're going to use animals or things or, or humans. Um, you're going to identify a gender for them. Uh, sometimes that might be more difficult because what gender does an amoeba have? I don't know. Um, come up with something or say none. Um, how old is the character? Give a physical description. Um, Oh, the link doesn't work. Oh, I know why. I haven't published this. Here we go. There you go. Try that now. Is that good? No, it was my fault, Karen. Link worked. Uh, I just hadn't pushed publish. Um, so, uh, okay. So uh, remember yesterday, I we came across uh, John Book describing him in three adjectives. Uh, that's what you're going to do. You're looking for kind of contrasting adjectives um, to give a three dimensionality to that uh, character. Um, you're going to describe where they live, describe the character's family, um, what they love most. Uh, what they fear most, that's always a good one. Um, what they want most in the world, which how maybe that's the same or different than what they love most. Uh, and finally, a short biography of the character. They were born uh, uh, in a small town in New England. Uh, they hated it there. And so they moved to the big city uh, as soon as they possibly could. They got... Uh, uh, a job as a cab driver uh, and became and found out that they could uh, pick up languages very easily and started speaking uh, every language they could possibly um, do, right? I don't know, making it up. Um, so uh, based on the, uh, uh, now I'm going to switch to the assignment again, uh, which is here. Uh, you're going to use that sheet, but here's the thing. Uh, this is why I asked yesterday uh, for you to get in to get together with a partner who um, you could you could uh, let me switch to this. Um, you could talk with in real time because uh, what I want you to do is to get together on the phone, uh, in Zoom, on Skype, wh whatever your, your communication medium of choice is. Um, and one person is going to have that Word document in front of them um, and ask those questions. And the other shouldn't be looking at a screen. Well, you can. You can look to see the, the other person or whatever. Uh, but you're just going to be answering the questions off the top of your head. Just make stuff. Um, 
make up stuff uh, so that uh, you're you're talking, right? You're telling that story rather than uh, should it be an and or an or. Uh, uh, worried about what the words are on paper. Let the other person in your group worry what the the words are on paper. Um, you just answer the questions and the person who's uh writing i'll get to that jared um the person who's writing it down uh if if you think that the initial question doesn't um uh uh provide enough detail ask for more detail so what does this character look like oh they're tall Okay, uh, what color hair do they have? Uh, oh, uh, red. Okay, um, are they pale skinned or, or dark skinned? Uh, they're dark skinned, okay? So uh, feel free as the recorder questioner to get more detail out of the person, okay? Um, also, there was another thing I wanted to say. Okay, well, um, and then you're going to switch, right? And the person who was the, the talker will become the, the recorder and the questioner. Um, and the person who was the recorder questioner will be the talker. Um, so um, here's the thing. Uh, your character, your first characters uh, must be an animal or your first character must be an animal, each of you. Um, you can make it an anthropomorphic animal that talks, uh, can be in a fantasy world, that's fine. Um, uh, or you can say, uh, this is uh, uh, a gorilla that communicates by sign language, or even, you know, this is a, a manatee that doesn't talk at all, and this is because uh, manatees have stories too, right? Um, so, uh, you decide, uh, you can make mythological animals. Uh, I don't care. Uh, uh, dragons, unicorns, hydras, anything you want. Um, uh, things. Then once you each have an animal, you make two more characters and these are things. So once again, you can anthropomorphize things. You can say, uh, this is Tommy the trash can, right? And he hops about and the thing he wants most in the world is to eat delicious trash, right? Um, and you can, can make up a whole story about Tommy the trash can. Or you can say, um, this thing is uh, a Boston Dynamics robot that uh, is trained in uh, avoidance, but has uh, gained sentience um, and uh, uh, now uh, wants to kill all humans. I don't know, I'm making it up. So uh, uh, you decide how realistic uh, or fantastical um, that uh, you want your, your characters to be. Would a spirit be a thing? Uh, sure. Yes. Um, can the thing be something resembling an object? I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, I think they are objects. Um, uh, the thing, uh, who is that? That's Stan. Uh, an android would classify as a thing. Yes. Uh, cyborgs are humans with, uh, um, things attached to them, just like you and I are humans with clothes attached to us. Bugs do count as animals. Uh, I don't, uh, a mimic would be a mythological animal. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna really like be like, this is not a thing, right? I'm just looking for characters. Okay. And finally, uh, your third character must be human. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mimics. I know what a mimic is. It's a D and D thing. Uh, yeah. It's an animal. 
that disguises itself as a thing. It's a mythological animal, right? Yeah. Uh, anyway, <sighs> nobody asks about humans. Uh, in the last class, we got in this long thing about furries, whether they were animals or humans. I don't care. You pick. You pick. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, well, I don't know. So, <laughs> uh, by the end of this session, and again, don't kill yourself doing this for hours and hours. Um, I generally limit it to 15 minutes uh, per character. If you can't, answer all these questions in 15 20 minutes uh you're probably taking too long okay um so if you want to go longer again i'm not going to penalize you for for working on it longer um you should have six characters two animals two things two humans uh the way uh i've structured the core the assignment on canvas uh one of you can upload a document uh, with all six characters and it will apply to both of you. Okay. So uh, uh, please put it all together in one document and upload it for the both of you. Okay. Uh, remember that there's uh, one, uh, one group that's three people. Um, in that case, in that group, you should make nine characters three each right so that's why i said uh usually when you have more people it takes less work but in this case it'll take more work it'll take more work because you're going to do three more characters between the three of you and just round robin it right so uh i'm talking you're typing uh typer begins to talk silent person is now typing uh then uh typer you get it right um, one other thing to keep in mind, um, all of these characters are going to coexist in one story, right? So, uh, uh, if you make a, a cyborg that lives on Alpha Centauri and an amoeba that swims around in a pond, uh, in Sudbury, Mass., uh, those two characters might have trouble communicating, right? Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, maybe coordinate uh, of uh, so that at least uh, there's a possibility for your characters to interact. Um, and um, finally, uh, the point is to learn to write with a um no this this is going to have nothing to do with dnd dnd is next week this will be due and done by the time we start dnd okay so don't worry about dnd um and yeah roll for initiative um so uh this is this is you're going to write a story with these these characters um and you're going to work together to write that story. So the point is to uh, uh, afford yourself, because um, honest to God, lots of writers write with a partner. Um, and one of them sits there and types, and the other one uh, paces and, and crumples up paper and throws it in the trash can. Um, and then they switch off. Um, and that's the experience that I want you to get out of this assignment is that kind of writing together. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, again, feel free. Um, make, uh, put yourself in a group. Uh, if I don't, if, if I see people who are, who don't have partners, uh, by, class tomorrow or, or there is no class tomorrow by about three tomorrow when i get on here uh to stream uh i will just pretty much randomly put you in a group um so uh also 
Um, you can communicate with each other via Canvas, um, via uh, the, the inbox, the, the email in Canvas, I believe. Um, magic and science fiction are both okay, yes. Um, or you can, I, I, it's interesting, I would love to see an entirely realistic, uh, I don't know, a uh, story that takes place in a city um, with with real people and their animals uh, and the things that surround them, right? Uh, where nothing talks that you wouldn't normally see talk in the real world. But magic is fine, fantasy is fine, uh, science fiction is fine. Uh, there are no real boundaries there. Just that two animals, two things, and two humans. Um, and this is due Friday at 5 p.m. Um, I would recommend not waiting until Friday at 5 p.m. because uh, by Friday um, class, uh, I will have given you things to do with these, um, these characters, okay? So uh, uh, over the weekend, you are going to write the story with these characters, and that story will be due on Monday. Okay. Um, so uh, I am moving on. Uh, when writing the story, is it possible to make changes to characters if they cannot plausibly interact with each other? Yes. Um, do not feel... Uh, bound by like any you can change anything to to in service of your story at any time okay um so i'm gonna switch to the whiteboard share okay so i want to talk about three act structure in four minutes um hollywood movies are generally structured in three acts. Um, this will probably ruin movies for you for a while because, uh, well, I'll get to that on Friday. Uh, we're not, we're not to what the story should be yet. Uh, I will, uh, I still have to go over a bunch of stuff. So just like, uh, the characters, this, this assignment wasn't ready to be, uh, unveiled until today because I needed what we talked about yesterday. Uh, the story isn't isn't ready yet. Uh, so um, a two hour movie starts on page one uh, and ends on page one twenty, right? Um, which, if you can do math. Uh, is a minute per page. Um, boo, boo, boo. Switching back over to My Fabulous Play, uh, how do we get a minute per page? Uh, well, first off, uh, if you see here, uh, it, the minute per page estimate um, comes from a time before word processors, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you look at this uh, font, you can see that an I takes much less space than an M. Uh, and that's called a variable width font in that each letter takes up only as much room as uh, it needs. And, and that comes from the font designer. But back in typewriter days, um, this is the font Courier New um, that we think of as typewriter font. And if you look here, an I takes up exactly here. Let's see, you can see it better there. An I takes up exactly the same amount of space as an M. Uh, that's a fixed width font, right? So um, we know since uh, 
each letter on the page takes up exactly the same amount of space as every other letter, we know exactly how many letters can fit on a page, right? Uh, that is a finite number. I have no idea what that number is. Um, but uh, given screenwriting format, um, and if you've ever seen a screenplay, and if I were a good professor, I would have a screenplay ready right now, but I don't. Um, screenplay dialogue, actually, um, is indented. Uh, oh, let me undo that. Uh, screenplay dialogue is indented, uh, but screen and it's double indented. It's indented on both sides. And honestly, I don't know how to make Word do that uh, right off the bat, uh, but I'm sure uh, it's possible. Usually, I used to have a, a bar up here that I could set things on, um, but uh, settings. Um, and actions, sometimes actions are embedded in the dialogue, but settings especially are um, not indented or, or at least uh, not indented more than normal um, and take up uh, the, entire, um, the entire width of the page. In fact, though, um, this would, in, if this were a screenplay, it would say int day, a cafeteria, right? Um, and int means interior, um, and day is day or night. Uh, int is uh, interior or exterior, and that's shorthand for uh, cinematographers and script supervisors and all the people who put together a shooting schedule to say, okay, we need this many interiors, we need this many exteriors, uh, we need this many uh, days, with light during the day, and we need this many night shoots, right? Uh, and they can put together a shooting schedule from the script itself. Um, in some cases, interior means day or night doesn't matter because it's going to be in a studio or in a house, and I can light it so that it looks like either day or night, and so I don't really have to worry about that. Um, that said, this format on average um, turns out to be a minute a page. So if we go back to this and I'm over time, um, if we go back to this uh, where we're from one to 120, um, we can actually divide up our script by page into act one, act two, and act three, right? Uh, and we know uh, that act one is about a quarter of my script, act two is about a half, and act three is again about a quarter. Um, and that's where, so, so the majority, um, uh, oh, okay. Um, the majority of uh, the script is Act Two. Okay. Um, okay. We will pick this up on Thursday. Uh, I'm over time, and uh, will uh, I will be streaming the rest of Tacoma um, tomorrow at three. Um, find yourself a partner and get to making characters. I'm gonna stop that share. Uh, and th thanks everybody for coming. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow.